Fidelity enters the space, Binance's new exchange, and Tether finds a new bank. Welcome to Ledger Mix. This is the daily show brought to you by Blockstreet that catches you up on the latest blockchain news. My name is Kenny Ferreira. Today is October 16th, and in our first story today, at a conference hosted by Bloomberg and Galaxy Digital, the $2.5 trillion asset manager Fidelity announced the launch of Fidelity Digital Assets a custody and brokerage business aimed at onboarding institutions. Now, Fidelity actually started researching cryptocurrency in 2014, ultimately passing on research and mining businesses. However, the leadership has identified the Achilles heel in the cryptocurrency ecosystem that we all know too well. Existing companies have not been able to provide institutions the tools they need to safely invest. In an interview with The Block, Tom Jessup, Head of Corporate Business Development said, While there are many places for consumers to buy and trade crypto, we didn't see analogous developments for institutions. We made a decision to move in this direction, and that has been validated by the prospects we are talking to now. Fidelity's reputation adds a ton of legitimacy to what they're creating, and it gives them a leg up over their competition. We might start seeing more asset managers jump into the space with access to a trusted institutional custody solution, and maybe even regulators will revisit the creation of a Bitcoin ETF if all goes well. In our second story of the day, we're moving over to Binance because they've launched their first fiat to crypto exchange, Binance Uganda, after announcing it at the end of June. It will allow for users to onboard Ugandan shillings to purchase Bitcoin and or Ether. Unstable fiat across the continent of Africa has historically been an issue, with Zimbabwe recording some of the most intense hyperinflation in the history of money, and some in South Africa already trading in their rand for crypto. Binance's platform is the largest exchange in the world by volume, and the company's CEO, CZ, has recently made a push to expand the cryptocurrency ecosystem, with this being one of many initiatives that is, quote, not about profits, but about spreading crypto. While this is just one piece of the puzzle for Binance's broader goals, providing a platform for Africa to access alternatives to government-issued currencies is a big step in building the necessary infrastructure to have cryptocurrencies truly adopted. And now for our final story, after losing its peg to the US dollar and struggling to get back to the $1 mark, Tether has re-established a banking relationship, this time with Dell Tech Bank in the Bahamas. In recent weeks, Tether and Bitfinex cut ties with Puerto Rico's Noble Bank, and yesterday Tether's price dipped to a new 18-month low because of worries about banking difficulties and rumors of insolvency. With regulated alternatives like Paxos Standard, the Gemini Dollar, and others quickly being added to exchanges like OKX and Huobi, Tether needs to work quickly to re-establish its $1 price. Now valued at $0.98 cents on CoinMarketCap compared to $0.96 cents yesterday, and still trading in higher volume than any other stablecoin, this news can ease some pressure and help tether back to the top. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and listening. If you watch this as a video on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, make sure to follow us and let us know in the comments what you thought about today's show. If you listen to this as a podcast, leave us an iTunes review because that'll help as well. I'll be with you again tomorrow.